What's going on, everybody? This is Gary B. Jr., your media consultant, and I'm here to talk to you about a question that someone recently asked about how to use free show to OBS and have a picture show up and then go back to lower thirds, right? So they're using OBS for their lower thirds to show their scriptures and their lyrics, and it's in lower thirds format, but they have a, a, a picture that shows up in-house that they want to be made available online. And then they want to go back to their regular online viewing after the picture slide is done. So today we're going to walk through my recommendation of how to do that. And I'm I'm interested to, interested in hearing if you have another solution to for this same situation, how you might use it in your ministry or your organization to date. All right. I'm using free show version 1.4.7 for this presentation. You may be on a different version. Um, and in that case, if it's a later version, things may be different. But as of today, this is how I would approach that uh, if I were in that situation. So the first thing is we've got some scriptures here and these scriptures are set to have a live stream or live. I got it called live training output and I've got a primary output. This live training is going into OBS, all right? And so it's connected through NDI and it's showing up in OBS. Whatever we see here in this particular area is what is going to be seen in OBS. Now, everything that you see this blank is actually going to be empty in OBS. And all they're going to see is this part and the video screen that's going to be behind or the camera, I should say, the camera feed in OBS is what's going to show in this, these blank squares. All right. So we're going to stay in free show for the for the sake of this conversation, because that's where all the changes need to happen. You don't need to make any changes in the OBS for this process to work. So let's dive into it. Now, the first thing I would say in order for this to work is that you want to set up some type of action for two reasons. One, so that you don't have to push a lot of buttons manually. And for two, so to be automated to where you add it to the begin to this particular slide that has the picture on it and you don't have to think about it again. So let's go ahead and add our actions in because we're going to need two. We're going to need one action that's going to change the output on the live stream to be the default. And then we're going to need another action that's going to change it back to being the live stream. But before we do that, let's add in a picture. All right. So I'm going to we've got this background set up right now. This is a basic background that's blue uh, that looks like this. We want that to be our generic background, but we want to add a picture um, in this particular show. And let's make the picture be. Um, I'm trying to look and see where would be a good place. So the girl, let's see, then the baby approached. Okay, so we'll put the picture on verse seven, all right? No, we'll put it on verse six. We'll put it in verse six, all right? And so we're going to go to our media. We're going to find a picture, first of all. So I'm going to go to media and then online. And then I'm going to search in, this is Pixabay, and I'm going to type in baby Moses. And we got all kinds of baby pictures. And then we got this AI generated baby Moses. I'm going to drag this onto verse six and it changes it. All right. So we've got this image of this little baby and it's showing up there just like that. And I've got it set to where it's going to cover the entire screen, even though it looks like it's not big enough. My default style setting. OK, if we go back here for my output, for my primary output, let's see, this is my primary. It's set to default. Let's look and see what the default style is. And if we go down here to default. It's set for media fit to be cover. All right. That's why you can see this full screen covering of this little baby Moses. OK, so that's one thing. Now, <clears throat> the next thing is once we put this particular image, this original one, it shows for all the slides. But once we go here, if let's say I'm going to go back. OK, you got blue before we arrow through. We got the baby and then I arrow again. The baby stays there. Now, you can keep the baby there because he's relevant for the rest of this particular passage to some degree, maybe up to a certain slide. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it to where it's only going to show up during this one slide is where it's going to be activated. And then the next slide is going to deactivate. All right. And so I'm going to find this same image. I'm going to go to my media 
and I'm going to go down to where it is in my files and it's a clean backdrop and I'm going to drag this one on the very next slide. All right. So I only want the baby to show on that one slide. So if we go back before the baby, you'll have your blue and then we've got the baby here and then we've got the no baby. All right. So that's one thing is that if you're going to have an image, there's going to be a background image then it's going to compete whatever your with whatever your current background is and it's going to change any background after it unless you have a default uh, background that you slide onto the next slide okay so that's one thing to consider now once we've got that done i've got my image where i want it i've got my backgrounds set to where they're set to where there's going to be blue from the very beginning and then right after the picture it's going to be blue again because i've dragged it on and you'll see the little icon there and every one of these verses after that down here, you'll see they've got that blue background. The next thing you need to do is add your actions. We need action that's going to change this particular slide on here, which people can see in-house to be the same thing that people are going to see online. All right. Now, my recommendation is that it's going to be automatic. So we're going to make it to where it's going to show up for only 10 seconds. And then it's just going to default right back to the lower thirds default template that we've got our layout that we've got. So how do we do that? We're going to go to functions and we're going to select the option on the left that says actions. And we're going to select an option that says new action at the very bottom. This is where you would add in. So I'm going to say change live to default. And this is just for my record so I can know exactly what this does. You want to make your particular actions represent or the titles of them represent what they do as best you can. All right. And you might create some type of, um, plan or strategy on how you, you know, you might have use abbreviations and things like that. Feel free. And now we're going to put what we're going to start action with. Okay. So now we need an action and we've got this, um, list of actions here. All right. So I'm going to go down and we're going to select, we got this output option. We're going to select change output style. Boom. All right. Now we got outputs and it says active outputs. We don't want to change all the active outputs. We just want to change one specific output. So I'm going to scroll down after I select that and we select the option that says specific outputs and you get a list of all of your outputs that you have. I'm only using the primary and the live training. So I'm going to select this live training. I'm going to change it to be a default layout, which is exactly what my primary is set to. All right. And now that that's there, I'm going to go ahead and hit close and that's there. So it's change live to default. Now I need another one. I'm going to select new action and we're going to say change to live after. Uh oh, I can't see my keyboard because my microphone's so big. All right. After 10 seconds. All right. Now this one is pretty cool because we're going to do something unique. We're going to go to action again, the start action. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And when we get to the bottom, we're going to see an option that says wait. And this is where it gets fun because now we're going to automate this by saying we're going to wait 10 seconds. You can make it be five seconds. You can make it be seven seconds. But whatever seconds you put, this is how long your the maximum amount of time your audience is going to have to see this particular um, picture. OK, we're going to wait and then we're going to change this back to the default. All right. So we're going to say add again or add below and we're going to select the default from the output. We're going to make it be back to the live training. So I'm going to go to this change output style. All right. And instead of it being active outputs, which that's not what we, we want to change a specific one. So we're going to select specific outputs and we're going to select live training. And we're going to go instead of it being default, which it, it already is going to be going to. After 10 seconds, we wanted to go back to our live style. All right. And that's what we currently have running on our live training already. All right. So we want to make it change back after 10 seconds and then we can just hit close. These are actions you've created, but you have not applied them yet. OK, they have not been applied to anything. So we got to drag these actions, change live to default onto this slide and the change to live after 10 seconds onto that very same slide. So two actions are going to happen at the exact same time, except one of those actions is delayed 10 seconds. Okay. So they're going to start at the same time, but the first thing on the first one is going to be to change it, right? Change it to be default. The first thing on the second action is 
count to 10 before you do anything. And then the next thing it's going to do is change it back. All right. So now let's look and see what that looks like. And what I want you to do is pay attention to this upper preview panel. Okay. So we're going to go to the slide right before the baby. I'm going to arrow to the right one time and check out what happens. The baby shows up. He's there. And then we wait 10 seconds. Maybe they're reading the scripture. The, the minister is sharing and talking about it. And then it goes right back to the default for the online audience in house. They still see the baby until you arrow to the right again. And it goes to the very next verse. This would be my recommendation for how to manage um, pictures in free show when you have a live stream and a primary or in-house screen. Now, another way that you can manage this in terms of organizing it, you can make um, like some sections. So we're going to go over here to the actions. If you hit this little arrow next to actions, you're going to see some little category breakouts. So I'm going to right click on this and these category breakouts are actually tags. All right. So I'm going to set a tag and I'm going to call it manage tags. And I'm going to call uh, or make a new tag and we're going to call this one uh, live stream pictures. All right. And now I'm going to pick a color for that tag so it can be easily seen. You can hit that little drop down and you can pick. I'll make it be red and then we can close that. And now I can right click on this. And we're going to. I think I mixed up my stuff. Let's see here. Manage tags. My live stream actually went down here. So let me change that. So this, your clearing actions is red. That's fine. My live stream, they're white right now. I'll make them yellow. I like yellow. We'll make them yellow. All right. So on the left side, you'll see your live stream pictures, actions. If we click that, there's nothing in there. So we've got to go back to our main actions tag. And we're going to drag these. We can see we can't drag them in there but we can right click on them so i'm going to right click go, click back on the actions right click on change live to default or whatever you named yours and you're going to set a tag we're going to select the yellow one and then i'm going to right click on the next one change back to live we're going to set it to the yellow one as well all right so now you got two live stream pictures here and what you could do with your team is that any time that you want to add a picture, you know that whatever that picture slide is, you're going to put these two actions onto that particular picture slide. And then you also need to make sure you put in your, if you want that picture slide to change back to the default background, you need to put in another um, drop in that next background that you want it to have. All right. But it's set to where it's going to change after 10 seconds automatically. You can make that five seconds if it seems too long or if it's a shorter verse or something like that, but that's completely up to you. And then if you want to make adjustments to the way that that live looks, so I, on my styles, it wasn't set to cover for that live style. It's set to blur feel. I can change that to make it to where it covers and it'll look exactly um, like it does for um, that particular uh, setup there. All right. And then uh, when you do that, it'll automatically update and adjust accordingly. All right. Hopefully that makes sense as to how to switch your images. When you put a picture into your slides, how to make sure it shows up in house and on your live stream. And all we did was we went to our slide that had the picture. We made two actions, one action to change the output style to show the picture, right? We just made it be the default. And then we put another action on that exact same slide that had a stacked action, one that waited 10 seconds, and then the next one changes it back to the live stream look or the live stream style. All right. And then it goes on through the slideshow. And even if you go through the slideshow first, so if I go here and we arrow to the right, we got the baby there in the picture. I can go over and it'll automatically change. We're still in default, but it'll count to 10 and it's still going to go back to the default even after 10 seconds goes, even if I'm on a different slide. So that action is running. It doesn't stop just because you switch slides. All right. Now, if you go through it that fast, then you might just say, okay, I don't need it to be on and active for, for 10 seconds. You might change that slide to be uh, five seconds or four seconds or something along those lines. So the audience online can see it for four seconds. It automatically changes back to show the, the, um, the, the cameras that are going to be showing on OBS on your live feed. All right completely up to you. But those are the things that you can nuance and adjust according to the flow of your services. This is a general idea to give you a basic of what I would recommend you do if you want to show pictures for both in-house and live stream 
when you've got a live stream set up that does not include backgrounds. All right. Until next time. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope it helped you in a major way. Now, at this point, most people would ask you to like and subscribe. And I think that's great. But my goal is a little bit different. My goal is to empower as many people as possible all over the globe. And there's one way that you can really help me do that. And that is to leave a comment below with a question, a thought, uh, how this video may have helped you or things that were left out that you still have questions about and to share this video with someone just like you, someone who is looking for answers, someone who's curious and wants to grow. With your help, I believe we can build a community of people that want to grow together. So until next time, God bless.